Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today I want to give you a review on the entire welding setup that I use for my mechanic shop and uh, property and any other tasks that I have. Um, so I have the uh, Miller Multimatic 220 ACDC multi-process welder. Uh, next to it I have the Miller Spectrum 375 Extreme Plasma Cutter. Um, I have the original Miller cart from here up that came with this welder, um, all sitting on top of a Vulcan cart. Um, I've got my uh, straight argon gas and my 7525 in the back of it. And I'll show you around the back. I actually have my acetylene torch uh, mounted on the back of this with my hoses and regulators. And... Um, and then all my consumables and everything inside the drawers. So I had a few other welders before I started. I've still got some inside the shop. Um, I've got the old Lincoln buzz box and um, I've got a Hobart, a Hobart 140. Um, that was the welder that I used for a long time. And in a mechanic shop, I found myself constantly needing the ability to weld a few other things. So this welder here has the ability to do MIG, TIG, stick, um, ACDC, and a bunch of other processes. So on the panel here you could see that I've got a flux core um, MIG setting, a MIG stainless to do stainless steel, MIG steel 25, uh, MIG steel C100 to use different uh, gas setups, um, MIG aluminum, TIG aluminum, TIG stainless and steel, and the stick welder. So all within this one welder, I can pretty much weld every material that I want. Um, the only thing that might hold me back is the thickness and the amperage of this welder. But as a mechanic and, uh, and a hobbyist and everything like that, um, I'm not a weld shop or anything, but this welder has done everything that I needed. So to get through these different processes, you go down through here and the screen will let you know what setting that you need to use. So it, it shows you your uh, where your grounds, what connections you're gonna use and all that stuff. So we'll go, let's see, we're at MIG aluminum right now. Let's go back up to MIG steel, uh, 7525 gas, shows you your gas you're gonna use shows you everything that you're going to plug in and then you've got two features up here so you've got the uh your normal welder settings where you're you're allowed to change everything um the way you want it or you've got auto set so these auto set features are what really works for me i'm not a professional welder and this thing has improved my welding substantially, this welder and the auto set and everything. So you type in, you want 3 16 8 inch, 14 gauge, 16 gauge, 18 gauge, 20 gauge, 22 gauge, 24 gauge. And it gets your settings fairly close um, to where they need to be. Now, if you need to change anything, you can go through and fine adjust it in the range of where it thinks that that material needs to be. Um, see if I can get this to focus in here. So I'm using 030 wire. You've got the option to use uh, 024 or the 035. Um, so the auto set is a great feature for rookies and um, basically your, uh, your person that's not welding for a living. So, We've also got a, a few, few of the TIG features over here. And on these welders, you simply, so you've got your, your pedal set up, your TIG switch here, and you've got uh, your ground and TIG and stick uh, plug-ins there. So underneath this cabinet here, I have my TIG pedal. Um, I've also got a TIG switch in there. I've got a few of my clamps I keep in there. So this here is the Miller Spoolmate 150, and that's the aluminum spool gun. Um, they've got a few variants of this, 
but that basically allows me to weld a uh, high quantity of aluminum and I have used that in a mechanic shop before there's a few scenarios um, the last one to mention would be like uh, the last one that I did would be fenders on a semi truck aluminum fenders and they cracked out and everything I had a guy driving through town his welds broke off and it was on a Sunday and uh, they gave me a call and I was able to uh, weld his fenders up and everything like that Above that is the plasma uh, torch head. I've got a spare one of those. Um, I had an accident with the first one, and um, so I ended up buying a spare one. Those are a little bit pricey, but uh, pretty smart to keep around. I keep my rod down here at the bottom, a little bit of my consumables. I don't use a whole lot of this stuff, but I've got my, uh, my chipping hammers, a few different types of uh, welding rod down there and somewhere up in here. So we've got aluminum welding rod, which some people don't know exists, but you could weld aluminum with stick, and that's kind of a nightmare to do. Somebody somewhere is good at it, but I wasn't. And then I've also got this stuff that they're advertising everywhere that's uh, an aluminum brazing rod. Also very hard to get to work properly. I'm sure there's some better and worse stuff out there, um, I can't remember what brand this is, but this is what caused me to buy this welder is I was trying to patch an aluminum coolant reservoir tank and I bought some of this stuff and it just didn't end up working. And I ended up buying this welder and I was able to TIG weld it and everything worked out perfect on that. So next to that, I've got my compartment. I've got some grinders and what else is back there? I've got my caps to my... Uh, to my bottles, in this drawer here. Uh, I've got the manuals to everything, my small ground, and that is a very small ground to this plasma cutter. So I've got the small ground to the plasma and all my consumables for plasma and TIG. And a lot of this stuff, so everything here was bought inside of the kit when I bought the welder. Um, I've got my thicker ground rod. The ground rods to millers are all interchangeable. So we've got the plug in here for the ground rod and the plug in here for the ground rod. So I just usually take one ground out, the larger ground, and switch them back and forth as I go. If I'm doing a lot of work, I might plug both grounds in. Um, so I've got my, my ground rod the TIG torch that Miller sent me, and the, the stick welder. So another cool thing about this welder is with my Lincoln Buzz Box that's just a 220 volt stick welder, I was a terrible welder with that. And I didn't use stick on this welder for a long time because I figured I would be a terrible welder with this one. Well, one day I ran out of wire and I had the stick and everything, so I plugged it in. I did the auto set feature here, um, which is just a real simple thing. Let's see, uh, so shows you where to plug that stuff in. And so you choose your diameter of rod that you're using, and then you choose the material that you're welding. And um, I used that feature and produced a perfect weld out of stick for the first time in my life, really. I welded a whole lot on a trailer with stick and it went perfectly. I couldn't believe the welder actually helped me um, produce really, really good welds. That's one of the reasons I like this. It takes a rookie welder and makes them just that much better. So top drawer, a uh, little bit of consumables, my uh, um, lenses, Lens protectors and everything for my helmet, consumables, torch cleaners. Uh, these, the, both the welder and the, the plasma are 220 volt or 110 volt. Um, 250, 240 volt, all those. And you just change the plug in, that's it. And it automatically switches over to 200, uh, 220, 240 volts. It does work a little bit better off these um, 
And uh, that's another really nice feature is that you could pretty much take this uh, anywhere you want and, and you're, you're gonna have the electricity for it. So a lot of people are gonna leave this on the bench. They're gonna leave it plugged into 240, 250. Um, but if you ever need to take this welder with you, it'll run very well off of 110 volts. So I've got, let's see what else we've got in here. I've got some hinges, a little bit more consumables, some weld-in bungs. That is all the Vulcan cart right there. This, uh, I believe Harbor Freight sells this cart. I looked everywhere. I, I usually try to avoid Harbor Freight as much as I can. Um, I was never real happy with a lot of their stuff and I looked everywhere for a good cart and I couldn't find one and I got proved wrong. We went to Harbor, Harbor Freight, bought this cart. This is flat out the nicest cart I have ever seen for welding. Um, it is really hard. Miller doesn't even make anything close. So this was the cart here that they sent me with this $3,500 welder. They sent me a cart I would not pay $20 for. So the drawers are kind of terrible. Um, it was way too small. Nothing really fit on there. I had no storage room at all. Um, the, the big bottles didn't fit, but, uh, but it worked really well to put this cart that comes with this machine onto the Vulcan and it gave me a little bit more storage and it worked out perfect. I had the room, so I got my strikers, my torch heads, uh, MIG pliers, my skull cap, and the consumables that I actually use more often. I'm actually a little bit low on them. Usually these are full of uh, flapper discs. Um, up top, we've got all my protective gear, uh, gloves, coat, um, forearm protectors, backhand protectors, gloves, and hood. So this welder has gave me the ability the, to whatever comes in, I don't have to worry about it. I can weld, and we already have, we welded stainless steel a lot steel a lot, aluminum, cast iron. I have the ability to, to do TIG on aluminum or, or plug in the MIG gun to do aluminum. So I don't have to worry about whatever comes in. We're totally set up to weld whatever we need to. So this made me completely self-sufficient when it comes to welding. The only reason I would need to go somewhere else or do anything different is if it's out of my skill range and that's another nice thing about this welder is I didn't use the TIG feature on it for the first year that I had it because I, I didn't know how to use it that well and I didn't want to weld on customer stuff without knowing how. And eventually I sat down, spent a weekend and started learning how to, how to use TIG weld. And once again, the welder helped me quite a bit and um, it just makes really nice TIG welds. Um, I'm not going to show you any welding in this video because I'm not going to represent Miller or anyone else with my welding. If I do a shitty weld, you're going to think that's a shitty welder. This welder is fantastic. Um, as for the plasma, so I ordered their smaller plasma. Uh, this is the 375. I have used both of these constantly. Both of these welders get, all this welding uh, setup gets whipped out quite often. This plasma is excellent. I cannot believe the quality of that little baby thing. I think it weighs like 17 pounds or something. Almost weighs nothing. And I used to have an ESOB plasma cutter. I think I paid $5,000 for um, back when plasma cutters were very expensive. This thing was $1,600 to $1,800. And outperforms that ESOB. Now, keep in mind that ESOB was 10 or 15 years ago. It outperforms that ESOB in every way imaginable. The other cool thing about this is it came with a carrying case. And, uh, oop, I got it plugged in. And so you, it's really portable. So you can run this off of a 100 foot extension cord and run it anywhere you want and go do some cutting. Um, it came with a really nice carrying case, and I have done that once before. So I paid 
3,800, 35, 3,800 for this. Keep in mind that was several years ago. I know prices are coming down. I believe I paid 16 to 1,800 for this. Um, I wish I would have gone with the 625. I've never got to use one, but bigger is always better, right? So this has done everything I needed. So I, I busted out a piece out of the scrap pile here, and this has not been cleaned up or anything. And it just cut through that like butter. This is half inch. Yeah, so that's half inch uh, steel plate. Um, and I needed this piece cut out of it here. And it cut through, this is freehand as well. Cut through that thing like butter. And once you go through and clean it up a little bit, it is, it is smooth as ever. So, And that's actually one of the earlier times that I ever used it. So it works really well. I've done a little bit thicker still than that. So I've done three quarter inch plate and went really slow and produced a really similar torch or a really similar cut. So don't take, uh, I, I know they don't recommend using it um, for that thick of steel. I think they say it's for three eighths. I can tell you it does work for a little bit more if you take it slow. Um, that plasma cutter is amazing very easy to use um, the only thing one time I, I broke the torch head I dropped something on it they don't sell anything separately I had to buy a whole new torch head which was nearly $400 so I ended up with a spare one down there and um, I, I keep that around just in case because that put me out of a plasma cutter during a job so I ended up ordering two of them but uh, it kind of sucks that if you're not careful, you can break that and you'll be out a lot of money. But other than that, this, this welder has, has done a lot of work. Um, I've got my argon bottle for aluminum and my 7525. That's what I use the most. Uh, let's see if we got enough light in the back. So my hood is up top. I've got a little bit of space back here where the original bottle setup was for the Miller cart. And I put my, I'm out of oxygen right now, but I've got my little acetylene bottle and I've usually got a little oxygen bottle. And I've got my hose reeled up in the back, my plug-ins reeled up in the back. So I think I've got plug-ins on both of these, but this just unscrews from right here. You can put on the 220 and it automatically adjusts itself inside. Um, and you're good to go. Uh, I've got, so the Vulcan cart, uh, we've got steel, stainless, and aluminum for uh, the TIG welder. So I have enough space for everything I need. So whatever I'm doing, I could just grab this cart and roll it over to the job, roll it around the trailer, and do whatever pr welding process. I could switch back and forth between Plasma, welder, MIG, TIG stick, very quickly, very efficiently, very easily. So who is this welder for? Who is this setup for? Well, it's for someone like me. Um, I'm not a professional welder, and I'm very limited on room, but I need to have the ability to do everything. Um, I'm, I'm out here in the middle of the country and uh, to go get something welded, you're having to schedule in, wait for something and it never works out that way in a mechanic shop. You get something in and you need something welded. Um, everything is right here on this cart. I don't have to have a stick welder. I don't have to have a MIG welder. I don't have to have a TIG welder. Um, and uh, I don't have to have three machines. I have everything in one machine. Um, I don't have to take up a bunch of space. Right now I'm working out of a crowded, I mean, you could see there's, I have very little room in just this corner. The rest of the shop is that same way. I have just enough room to walk around and do what I need to do. Um, I can have everything on one cart. When I'm not using it, I can shove it up uh, against the wall and um, and it's there and it's ready to go whenever I need it. When I do need it, I can drag this cart anywhere in the shop, anywhere on the property, 
And if I need to, I can, I can take this welder by itself. I could take the plasma by itself. And um, they're, they're portable enough um, where I can use them. We actually did some pipe fence and I used the uh, stick with this welder out of the back of the truck and a generator um, and 100 and, no, it was 240 volts we were welding with out of that generator. Um, and we welded up 150 feet of uh, pipe fence with this. So it worked perfectly. Uh, there was nothing else that we really needed. Um, I definitely suggest the Vulcan cart for any welding setup. I have messed with a lot of welding carts. That's one of the best setups that I've ever found. And if you add on a little bit of extra storage, it works even better. So hope you enjoyed this review. Hope this helps somebody out there. Um, there's a lot of good reviews getting in this, into the specifics of welding. Um, I didn't want to talk about the welding of it. I wanted to talk about the convenience of it for someone like me, for a mechanic shop, for a hobbyist, for someone that's not welding all the time and, um, and needs something in a smaller package, something that's that convenient. So hope you enjoyed my review. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe.